Apex Legends is sadder than you think. And by the end of all these backstories, I think you'll understand why I say that. Apex is built on sadness. Without the struggles of these characters, the Apex games wouldn't be able to run. There are only a select few that would actually risk their life for nothing. Every character is there for a reason, and most are there to fix their past. So today, let's pull back the curtain and talk about the sad past. Let's start off with Horizon's backstory. Horizon knew to fix the energy crisis in the Outlands, she would have to leave her planet and her son Newton to collect Branthium. Knowing it would take a bit of time, she made a promise to Newton that she would return. Unfortunately, while in space, Dr. Reed betrayed her, leaving Horizon in the black hole's orbit. Everyone was convinced that Horizon had died, but Newton didn't believe them. Newton believed his mother would come back one day. Unfortunately, when Horizon returned to Olympus, 87 years had passed, and Newton was dead. Horizon felt horrible for breaking her promise and leaving her son without a mother. In a last ditch effort, Horizon joined the Apex Games in order to see her son again. To do that though, she would need to win the Apex Games and use the winnings to research time travel so that she could one day return to her son. Don't worry my boy, I'll keep that promise yet. It's just a matter of time. Now what makes Horizon's past even sadder is that she's lost trust in everyone. Even when Tobin offered Horizon resources for her research, she declined saying, I would rather not rely on others after being betrayed by my assistant. Mirage. Mirage has had possibly the hardest upbringing so far. On the outside, Mirage seems really happy, but on the inside, it seems that he might be struggling with depression. We know he likes to joke around a lot, but why? In Mirage's case, it makes sense to joke around not only to boost his self-esteem, but to hide the fact that he's depressed. A great example of this is his heirloom. And while Mirage says that he's joined the Apex games for fame and glory, I have the feeling that he's joined also because he knows that it will distract him from the sadness that he feels inside. Now the actual cause of this depression could be a few things. As Mirage was growing up, his three older brothers went missing. On top of that, he knew if he joined the Apex Games, he was risking his life and could make his mother childless. And we know that Mirage's mom, Evelyn, is the only person Mirage cannot live without. If she dies, Mirage will snap. And we already know that she's having memory issues. Yeah, yeah, that's right, mom. One sec. Yeah, I'm, I'm your son. We also just found out that Mirage really never had a father figure growing up, as his father was always out making money. I miss my dad. The last thing that actually proves he's depressed is that when he tells Pathfinder his past, he tells him to keep it a secret. He wants to keep his past a secret because he doesn't want anyone to know he's a wreck behind closed doors. His image is everything, and I truly think that's one of the saddest things about Mirage. Pathfinder. Pathfinder has always felt a lack of purpose and has always wanted to know who his creator was. Pathfinder originally woke up in a warehouse where his creators had set him up. At the time, Pathfinder didn't realize that the people that were around him at the beginning were his creators. But in his final moments, using his memory logs, he found out who his creator was and that he did have a purpose. Unfortunately, he didn't have enough time to learn everything as his files were corrupted and he shut down. Now, because Pathfinder lost those logs, he has forgotten who his creator was and why he was made. So to find that information, he's joined the Apex Games to get his name out there, hoping his creator would see him. Similar to Pathfinder, Wraith woke up in a facility with no memory of who she was. Wraith was an IMC pilot who volunteered to be the lab rat in Test Project Wraith, which was helping the IMC to learn about other dimensions. As a result though, she lost her memory. Wraith desperately wants to know who she is, and she wants to know her past, so she's joined the Apex Games to answer that question. I want to know who I am. Well, maybe one day you'll get what you're looking for. Now, let's move on to Loba. Now, as we all know, when Loba was at the age of nine, Revenant killed her parents. This has really turned her sadness into rage, and this is where we're gonna get into Revenant. So after Revenant killed Loba's parents, a glass shard broke his programming, and when he looked into the mirror, he saw what he had become. And we know that Revenant is a simulacrum created by the Syndicate and Hammond Robotics. This means that even if he dies, 
he'll come right back just with a different body. Even if he tried to kill himself, no matter what, he would come back and continue to suffer. It's a never-ending loop of torture. His last hope was Loba finding his head and destroying it. Unfortunately, when Loba found out that Revenant wanted that to happen, Loba kinda just stopped caring about it. She wants Revenant to suffer, and whatever makes Revenant suffer the most is what she wants. You took away everything I cared about. Now I'm taking away everything you care about. You're not dying today. You're not dying ever. You have a long, miserable life ahead of you. Also, the way that Revenant originally died is absolutely horrific. Revenant's real name is Caleb Cross, and he was killed by Bob Woods, who essentially drowned him in sewage. Next up, we got Octane. Now, Octane is a little bit difficult because we don't really know a ton about him, but the thing I'm going to focus on here is his stim. Octane is constantly using his stim. So, is Octane a drug addict? To be honest, yes, I think Octane is a drug addict. And there are three things to back this up. First is obviously that he uses his stim constantly. The second is that he twitches in the lobby, which is common with drug addicts. And the third is that whenever he's not using his stim, he always seems to be bored or just not happy. But when he's taking his stim, it's the complete opposite. And that's why I find Octane's life so sad, is because essentially the drug has taken over and it controls his life. The other issue that Octane faces is he has no one to help him. The only person that has ever tried to help him is Lifeline, and she really couldn't get to him. Octane's parents can't help him because he left home because he didn't want to work for his father, who owned a pharmaceutical company, and no one else has really stepped up to the plate. He doesn't have anyone to help him. Now, similar to Octane, Lifeline didn't want to pursue the business that her family was in. As a young child, she had a great life living with her wealthy parents, but as she grew up, she realized how her parents were making all that money. They were making the money off the war, and were war profiteers. She not only despised it, but she didn't feel like she fit in with her family anymore, and so she didn't trust them. Lifeline soon left the planet with Octane, as both of them had different plans than what their parents were doing. And at the time, Lifeline was heavily supporting an organization called the Frontier Corps, and so when the Frontier Corps started losing money, Lifeline decided to join the games to aid the Frontier Corps. Oh, and by the way, to clarify, the Frontier Corps is an organization that helps the people in the Frontier. For example, people that are struggling during the war. So basically the opposite of what Lifeline's parents were doing. Bloodhound. As Bloodhound grew up, he not only lost his parents in the Meltdown on World's Edge, but he also lost his uncle, Arthur. Bloodhound had always been trying to prove himself to Arthur, but it took up until Arthur's death before he realized that Bloodhound was truly something. I have spent 10 winters proving myself to you. Bloodhound had lost everyone he cared about, but years later, Bloodhound met Boone. Boone and Bloodhound captured a beast called Sir, but when Boone decided he should sell it, he ended up dead. The beast had escaped and killed him. To Bloodhound, Boone's death was marred with dishonor, meaning he wouldn't enter Valhalla. So now, Bloodhound hunts in Boone's name, hoping to get enough kills so that the Allfather will let him in. Bangalore. During the end of the Frontier War, Bangalore lost her brother Jackson as the back end of the ship exploded, sending him into space. Though nobody knows if he actually died or not, for the sake of this video, we're gonna say he did. Unfortunately for Bangalore, this is not the only brother that she's lost. Bangalore has also lost her older brother named Zeke Williams, who was a scientist working at one of the IMC labs that was raided. The main reason that Bangalore joined the Apex Games is to reconnect with the rest of her family, if they're even still alive. The issue is she needs tons of money and a pilot willing to make the long journey back to Gridiron. Now, I'm not going to go into why they ended up 20 years away from Gridiron, because that would take a while. But another thing that Bangalore has to deal with are the people around her. Now, when people look at Bangalore, when they see the patches, they look at her like she's a monster. It's not her fault that she grew up on the wrong side of the war, but because of this past, and when she talked to Pathfinder, she broke down. And similar to Mirage, she doesn't want anyone to know that deep down, she's broken. 
Crypto. Crypto Artesian Park was an orphan on the streets of Suitomo. As he and Mila, his foster sister, grew up, they got a job designing drones for the Syndicate. They discovered a dark secret and so the Syndicate murdered Mila and framed it on him. He lost everything. And because of what the Syndicate has done, Crypto has joined the Apex Games to try to get revenge on them. Luckily though, I don't think Mila is actually dead. Fuse. Fuse had his arm blown off by Maggie. Now this might be a bit of a stretch, but I honestly think that Fuse might not be as strong on the inside as he seems to be on the outside. I think there's something darker that we just don't know about yet. What if the reason Fuse likes to fight is that he's trying to distract himself from the deep state that he's in and doesn't want to acknowledge? What if he's similar to Mirage? Last but not least, Gibraltar. Gibraltar ran away from home because he disagreed with his parents over joining the Civil War. Gibraltar got a job in Sola City and was lonely, but eventually met Nick and they ran away together with the plans of joining the fight. Gibraltar stole his father's motorcycle and got in an accident and got trapped by a deadly mudslide. The accident almost killed Nick and when Gibraltar's dad came to save him, he ended up losing an arm because of a falling rock. Gibraltar ended up saving their lives by using the dome shield. Gibraltar has never forgotten the sacrifice that his dad made and also feels bad for Nick taking the fall for what he had done. Since then, Gibraltar has devoted his life to helping those in need, so to do that, he's joined the Apex Games to protect his squad. Alright, so we technically have three characters left, Watson, Rampart, and Caustic, but we don't know a lot about them, and from what we know, it doesn't quite fit the theme of this video, so for now, I'm not going to include them. So yeah, that's gonna wrap up this video. I hope you guys understand why I think Apex Legends is so sad. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you want to, share this video with your friends. And with that, I'll see you guys next time.